during the last meetup was the rack where the vibraphone droppers uh, will go. That caused a bit of a delay and problem with mounting the gates. There we have a new prototype and are working towards getting that made in metal to be able to mount the vibraphone droppers once we have finished assembling them. We remounted the vibraphone plates, tightened the plastic strings where necessary and replaced the broken apart rubber bands so that they now all are on their plates and bounce um, reasonably well. Ellie did a lot of work with tuning the vibraphone. Yeah, because now all the pipes, all the uh, vibraphone plates have their individual pipes assigned to them, so we have proper vibraphone uh, noises so you can hear the, the proper vibrato that we wanted with with the vibraphone or the rest of the plates but that's like also prepared so that's all 35 i think we've tested the interchangeability of them they will struggle to fit inside the machine but that's on for for the future since we've worked a lot of the vibraphone we've also been able to take care of the whole track that's below it So we've uh, removed the last uh, iteration from Martin, which was which was not functional, uh, which went around the pillar, which had the very uh, airy and thin plywood parts. Now we put this one back in, which works a lot better, which is very stable. We haven't had anything fly out of it yet. Um, and to connect this part back to the tracks, where the tracks are, uh, we had to manufacture a, a, another part. So the easiest way to do this was to carve a master model out of out of foam and then cast it out of uh, resin. So we put some fiber in there for mostly for aesthetics because it will not serve much purpose structurally. And uh, I've also made a few brass parts like this one to hold the whole track uh, vertically, and this one to make sure that the wood is connected to the resin part. They're not glued together; they're just screwed together and also maintain this track low enough 
to the frame so that we could actually get marbles to go through without flying off. So if I put one there, we have proper marble track, uh, the marbles properly track all the way through down to where the Emerald One entrance is. The marble swoosh that is currently not mounted, but will go on the machine again, had the trouble that some of the lanes weren't running as smoothly. That was partially just due to it having collected dust, so we wanted to sand some of the parts again, dust combined with graphite powder, and also uh, some of the lines did profit from being a bit wider because the over-rotation that Martin designed into it did take out a bit of the speed. In some cases, it was, the models were struggling to get all the way down. And when we took this off, wanted to reattach it again, and the screws that held this down onto the marble dividers, their screws suffered. We did a bit of a defect here, so that was the reason why we remade this part now with the newly running CNC. So in the back you can see some tabs here and there out of brass or, or steel to hold the track in place, both uh, low enough so that the marbles can roll and not get stuck uphill, but not uh, low enough that the, the marbles get stuck downhill because there's a fine balance, there's very little uh, altitude drop on the base track, for example. That was a little drilling jig you will probably see in a, one of our videos from Nerdland in Wachtebeke, Belgium. I intended to machine the marble ring lift one again, since the ring lift feeds more marbles than the upper one can take in. Sadly, since uh, moving those machines is apparently really difficult and it took six hours more than expected. It's quite late already and uh, I will just grab my stuff and get out of here. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. We've gained a lot of subscribers since the last time and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.